The empty streets in Tombstone and other popular tourist attractions in Cochise County appear to be scenes from science fiction movies. Once vibrant destinations are now desolate and depressed. The throngs of people that were here not long ago enjoying food, drinks and entertainment are gone. Shadows and silence have replaced crowds and conversations. In the city of Douglas, on the border with Mexico, Anel Lopez and her husband bought the historic Gatson Hotel about three years ago. Through hard work and determination, the fruits of their labor were paying off. Steadily, we were just growing and growing and growing and growing upward. We would see the upward trend. The couple added a speakeasy and began hosting weddings and other events. They remodeled and helped the community open two small museums. And then, the coronavirus pandemic. Prior to COVID, um, we had 32 employees. At that time, when it was still booming, we needed to add about five more at that time just because we couldn't keep up with the volume and the momentum. It was growing faster than what we could keep up with. Um, and then COVID hit. So right now we have seven employees. Um, they average about 15 to 20 hours a week right now. Some of her 22 rooms are still being rented by guests who go to Douglas for essential business, but all other activities are on hold. You have to remember our business encompasses everything, bar, restaurant, events, and I have zero. You know, that, that is where we really bring in our revenue. So, and this is kind of our own lockdown. <laughs> it's a nice fortress to be in, but yes, it's, it's, it's just very sad. Um, I think it's, what's more disheartening for me are my, my employees. About 30 miles northwest of Douglas, employees are faring much better at Jimmy's Hot Dog Company in Bisbee, which is staying quite busy. Workers include Jaylene Alvarez. She lost a part-time job in historic old Bisbee, but has had more security on the outskirts of the city. I have roommates and families, and uh, they're all out of work right now, so it's affecting them. My roommate, she's got, she had three jobs at once, and now she's got none, so kind of helping her out with that. Lucky to have this. We do this about 300 times a day. Jimmy Pianchi and his wife opened the restaurant 14 years ago. From the day we opened, about half of our business has been traditionally takeout. And so it wasn't much of a jump for us to go to 100% takeout. Um, our business hasn't uh, suffered a great deal. Given the coronavirus-related closures and limitations, he considers himself lucky. A great deal of the mom and pop restaurants are not going to be able to survive this. Um, I hate to see that happen, but uh, even in our situation, um, if I was a only a sit-down restaurant, I'd already be closed. Ed Gilligan is the Cochise County Administrator and oversees its budget. Discussions had already begun for the new fiscal year beginning on July 1st, but the coronavirus has thrown a harrowing wrench into the numbers. The repercussions include a precipitous drop in sales taxes, fewer funds from gasoline taxes, and a sudden spike in unemployment. Our plan right now is to budget close to flat with identifying some things we know we can absolutely operate throughout a year without. One of those operations is the juvenile detention center. And uh, our intent now going into the year is to develop a plan to close operations there and to contract with the neighboring county for those services. Ensuring residents' economic, social, and medical needs was already challenging in this rural region, pre-coronavirus. Carrie Langley is the Director of Health and Social Services for the county. We're just over 6,200 square miles. And so to put that into perspective, that's about the size of Connecticut and New Jersey combined in land mass. And that's about 130,000 individuals who call Cochise County home. As of April 30th, the county reported 784 COVID-19 tests, 39 cases and zero deaths. The open space can aid with social distancing and isolation efforts, but it also creates hurdles for residents who may have to travel far for medical appointments or other essential services. Staff here are taking precautions, but they have to keep working. So we're still public health and public health, even though we're in the middle of a global pandemic, we still have to make sure we're delivering all the vaccines that kids need and adults need. Um, we still have to provide other services like uh, detection and treatment for STDs and um, TB and anything else that comes under the realm of public health and answering questions about COVID. 
Moving forward, Langley says the pandemic has underscored the need for public health funding and broadband internet so people can stay connected and work or study. There will be other challenges, especially since governments are already reeling from the painful drop in revenues. Ed Gilligan says the county will be forced to drop or reduce some services, but he hopes to preserve the countywide staff of employees. Our county uh, employs about 850 people, and that number reflects a, a decrease of 200 people from the, the highest staffing level we had, and, and that was preceding the uh, Great Recession in 2008 and 9. We never built back. And so with that, those 850 people reflect the, the critical infrastructure we need to provide services across the county. Cochise County shares a border with Mexico where many shoppers and other visitors live but would spend their money in Arizona. The border is presently under a restricted travel ban from the Trump administration, and County Sheriff Mark Daniels is asking that those restrictions continue. He says it's for the good of public safety, public health professionals, and their families. Back at the Gatson Hotel in Douglas, Lopez pays close attention to every development. She can't help but ponder about an eventual reopening and wants to move cautiously. You know, it, that's a very difficult question. It's something that I think about every day. Um, for us, just we have to be very careful on how we roll that out because if I have 20 to 30 random people walking through my lobby, you know, those random people, we don't know where they've been. We don't know, you know, like with the business essential travelers, they know the protocols. Um, so this is kind of already that screening process. The ones that are just trying to get away from wherever they're on lockdown, I don't know what they're carrying and they're exposing us to. 